Hi, my name is Ryan Sloan, and I want to welcome you to today's episode of The Gear Cage. And today, we're not going to be talking about anything particularly sexy, we'll say, uh, but I think it's it's a confusing topic, and I really do like exploring those confusing topics to see if we can't give some clarity to, to our viewers and to other people just searching the web for these answers. So what is the topic today? We're going to be talking about the fascinating and ever-changing landscape of Pro Tools licensing. And it is such a complicated topic, and it's only complicated because they want to give users so many options. It becomes confusing. But I'm going to break this down into three segments, and I'm going to put those segments down below so you can jump to whichever one is applicable for you. So uh, be sure to look down there if you don't want to watch the whole thing. So, and in fact, you can see my notes here. They're quite extensive. Uh, it's kind of insane for software upgrades, how we can have so much written down. But effectively, let's start with part one now. So let's say you don't own Pro Tools yet, and you want to uh, get into it for the first time. What do you do? Okay, so you have two ultimate paths that you can choose with Pro Tools licenses. You can buy a license that you own forever with no expiring time element called a perpetual license. So whenever you see a perpetual Pro Tools license listed, that means that you effectively own the software. Now, they do have what they call a support plan, and we're going to get to that in part two to explain what a support plan is. But just know that when you see a perpetual version of Pro Tools, that when you buy it, you own that version, and it won't expire or stop working. So if you keep that kind of over here in one category, you'll kind of know what that's doing. Now, much like Adobe or other companies, Avid also offers subscriptions for Pro Tools. And they offer those in two main flavors. They offer uh, an annual subscription for $299.95. And that will give you access to Pro Tools for 365 days. So during that whole time, you can open the software, you can do whatever you want with it. But if you don't renew the subscription at the end of the time, you won't be able to open the software anymore. It's just like a magazine subscription, how a magazine comes in the mail, you know, for a year. And then once the subscription ends, if you don't renew it, it stops. So it's the same way with Pro Tools software. Now, on the other side of the subscription coin, they do also offer a monthly plan. And this can be handy if you're not working with recording a lot. Like if you're just working on a, a project for a few months here and there, uh, a subscription can be great. It is the most expensive option to go month by month. Uh, it's $34.95 per month. So if you average that out over the course of a year, it would be over $365 at that point. So, um, you know, to keep it going monthly long term is probably not the best solution unless you just can't afford an annual subscription or perpetual license. But those are the three main ways to get into Pro Tools. So again, you have your perpetual license that you own. And once you pay the price, which right now for the regular version of Pro Tools, it is $599. And then you own it. And then on the other side, you have the subscription plan. So $299 per year for 12 months of unrestricted Pro Tools access. And you also do get access to all updates that would come out during that time or month to month subscriptions that you can start and stop any time for $34.95 per month. Okay, so that's the brief overview of part one. That's the type of licensing that you have available for Pro Tools, perpetual licenses that you own and subscriptions. Now let's take it further. So as far as subscriptions go, that's really all there is to it. That whole, that whole idea starts and stops over there with that model. Now, if you own a previous version of Pro Tools, this is where we get into part two. And it also ties into current versions that you buy. So when you buy Pro Tools in 2020, you get what they call a support and update plan. So when you purchase that for the first time, you actually get one year of free updates, upgrades, and a certain amount of telephone support or email support from Avid. 
So that comes with the software itself. So I think a lot of people get this confused with a subscription because it is a one year update plan. But this is really almost like a maintenance release, like an ongoing upgrade payment plan. So when you get your perpetual license and it comes with one year of support, you can let that go uh, in much the same way a subscription would go. But the key difference is that at the end of one year, it does not expire. Your, your software will continue to be accessible to you with whatever version you stop at. So that's the biggest thing. You'll be able to continue to open that version that you stop at uh, software unfettered until it won't run on your machine anymore. So this can be helpful because if you, uh, you know, tend to keep your machine operating system and all of your hardware, your interfaces all the same, that's actually good because uh, then you can run that version of Pro Tools potentially for years and years without needing to do any type of upgrade. Now, let's say that uh, you're running version 9 or above of Pro Tools right now, and you haven't updated in many years. The good news is that you can do what they call a Pro Tools reinstatement. And this is, again, what gets confusing for people. But let's just for the purpose of being simple, call it a software upgrade. So you can upgrade to the current version of Pro Tools with this reinstatement license and continue to get those updates like we talked about for one year. So that's a Pro Tools license reinstatement. Uh, that's going to cost you a little bit more for regular Pro Tools. Uh, if you have version 9 to you know, Pro Tools 2018 or whatever it may be, it'll cost you $299 to uh, reinstate that license and get it current again. So once that happens, you can do it just like before where you let it go for a year, you get all the free updates and upgrades, and then at the end of that year, you can continue to renew the support contract or you can let it lapse and then do a reinstatement two, three, four years in the future. Again, the huge thing here is that you don't lose the software when you own a perpetual license. So at the end of this support and upgrade contract, uh, if you don't renew it, you'll be able to continue using it. And that's a really big deal. Now, if you like to always have the latest and greatest operating systems, you may potentially opt to continue your support plan and not let it lapse with Avid. And when you do this, they give you a discount for basically keeping your software current all the time. Uh, and you do save money to do that versus doing a subscription. In fact, right now, as we're talking, the price to do that is $199 per year. So if you want to always have access to the latest and greatest Pro Tools version with the latest features, the latest bug fixes, then you get uh, the upgrade and support plan for $199 and just keep it going year after year. So it does actually save you a decent amount of money compared to going with the Pro Tools subscription uh, when you add it up over time, uh, saving $100 per year over the annual subscription price. Now, um, this doesn't address a few of the outlier cases here. Uh, and also, I'm going to give you a big warning here based on what I've seen in the market recently. So uh, stay tuned for that too here in just a second. But okay, so as far as the extraneous things out there, Pro Tools HD or Pro Tools Ultimate that they call it is a separate class of product, but it does have the same mechanisms involved with it. And to be completely honest, most users out there don't need the feature set that Pro Tools HD or Ultimate uses. If you're working out of your home, if you're collaborating with lots of other people, you can probably get by with the standard version of Pro Tools. But if you're doing work in post and other commercial grade work, uh, it'll definitely be worth your time to look at Pro Tools Ultimate, formerly known as Pro Tools HD. And I'm going to include a link below as well to a chart that goes over the differences between each version of Pro Tools so you can go by and compare it side by side. Now, here's, here's the big bombshell news that I want to really hammer home so that people watching will understand what I'm about to say. So Avid recently in the last 
probably six to eight months, has started offering something on their website that on the surface seems like it would appeal to consumers. They call it a perpetual license to subscription cross-grade. So if you see a perpetual license to subscription cross-grade, run away. Let me explain. So when you do this, in fact, as we talk right now, they're offering you um, a perpetual license to two-year subscription cross-grade for the price of $199. So that would technically save you $100 over the reinstatement plan. But there's a catch, right? What did we talk about in section one? When you go to a subscription, you have to routinely keep it up to date because if you don't, you lose access to your software. So at the end of this two year period where you've changed your perpetual license into a subscription for $199 for two years worth of updates, you're gonna be back to paying $300 per year the way it stands right now to use Pro Tools because you'll be stuck in the subscription kind of groove there, if you will. So I, I can't see a lot of upside to doing that. Uh, in fact, honestly, I feel like it's a little bit predatory on their part to do that to their customers because a lot of people don't understand the licensing as it is. And also, I just can't see a good valid reason for really doing that if you own the software. Uh, when you're doing the math long term, it really does make sense to own the perpetual license and um, just continue to update or upgrade every once in a blue moon if you're not a current uh, or a, a frequent OS upgrading person um, or if you're not always upgrading things like audio interfaces, plugins, and all that. Because I totally get that at some point you do have to upgrade an interface that breaks or you do have to upgrade uh, some software plugins from Waves or something like that. And that can usually lead to a spiral where everything stops working and you have to do an upgrade. But I would contend that you can probably get away without doing that for years at a time, probably three or four years. And if you can do that, and pay that $299 price currently for an upgrade every three or four years, I think that's probably going to best serve you in the long term in terms of managing your software licenses. And furthermore, uh, other software packages like Studio One from PreSonus and now Luna from Universal Audio are coming on the scene and starting to offer users a lot of powerful features and choices moving forward. So. Um, this is all food for thought, but uh, I hope you learned something about Pro Tools licenses. I know it's not an exciting topic, but uh, since Pro Tools is the foundation for a lot of professional recording out there, I thought it was important to at least have that discussion. So if you do have any other questions, definitely be sure to leave them in the comments. I hope this video helped you. And um, if you're enjoying the channel, do subscribe. We really do appreciate the subscribers here. And if I can help with anything else, again, just let me know. My name's Ryan Sloan for The Gear Cage, and we'll see you again soon.